All right, and we are live, and I am your Bitcoin boy, Sonny Ray. Have been at this Bitcoin thing since 2011, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for joining me today. Um, so I've done I don't know 72, 73 interviews over the last. Uh, two, two and a half months. Hopefully everyone's been enjoying them. You know, we've had guests like Max Kaiser. I recently had uh, Michael Sunshine, the CEO of Grayscale that did $700 million in Bitcoin uh, acquisition in one day, uh, which was like 18X, the total amount of Bitcoin mined and many, many other really exciting people. So I, I, I am really thankful for everyone that's been watching. Um, you know, some people have been asking me the question, you know, why haven't your videos popped yet? Like, why aren't they, you know, getting tens of thousands of views? Like you're getting crazy, amazing, you know, guests, like you're on it every day. Um, you know, to that, I'll say that, you know, it's, it's, it's partially by design in the sense that, you know, I, I obviously, um, you know, with Unocoin having, you know, one and a half, almost two million users and all the companies and things I'm a part of, um, you know, I, I could obviously, uh, you know, push these videos more um, and get way more exposure, but I've refrained myself from doing so mainly because it's part of the thinking that I applied everything I do is I, I like to see and observe and, 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 and create things in silo without kind of like piling on with all the other things I've done and, and just let them see if kind of, you know, get them, get that organic growth. And, and a lot of other reasons, I obviously know that I could be doing live streaming that could 20 X my viewership. Um, I, I know I could be, um, you know, like I said, promoting across other channels. I could be writing mini blogs. I could be taking the, the best pieces of each one uh, of each interview and writing mini blogs and creating micro video content for Instagram, et cetera, et cetera. But I've refrained from doing so um, for the time being, mainly because uh, all that other stuff is coming. So you can look forward to that. But if you have been following me for the last couple months, uh, I really, really appreciate it. You know, this is a bit ad hoc. I know this is kind of a, a maybe a newer format for some of you in terms of me speaking straight to the camera with no guests. But this is something that I've been thinking about, talking about with my friends and, and, and something I wanted to do, which is now. So every day you can expect or every two days now you can expect a new interview with like, I mean, if you think my guests have been awesome, like uh, they, they, I mean, I, it's just amazing. Like, it's like the lineup of people that I have coming on, it's just getting better and better and more exciting. And we're going to get old guests back on and, and get new ones on. And then if you're out there also, somebody who kind of, you know, maybe has been doing a lot of things in the space and you know me and maybe I haven't reached out to you, it's not because, you know, any other reason, but, you know, maybe I just think you're too busy or whatever. So if you are interested, please just DM me, they're open and, would love to capture your story. So, so really what I've been doing with the interviews, everyone, is I've been trying to capture kind of this. So what I say is, is that Bitcoin is nothing more than ones and zeros. And it's really the people behind Bitcoin that make it so um, and that give it life and give it, you know, purpose and meaning. And there is a very vibrant community of Bitcoiners and people that have given their life to Bitcoin. And, uh, and part of my goal with my show is to put a spotlight on them. And I know that some of my guests are not, you know, like not everybody's kind of like an Adam back or whatever, like someone like this super hardcore um, Bitcoin. But, you know, I, I try and capture the ethos of Bitcoin. And, and for me, it's uh, Bitcoin is about being open and being friendly and being, you know, intellectually curious and and to call people out when, when maybe I don't agree with them, but at the same time, not to close the door on them. Okay, so what the hell am I doing today? So I am back, ladies and gentlemen, mainly because, oh my God, there's some crazy shit going down right now in the Bitcoin world. And I wanted to share some of that with you in case you've been sleeping under a rock. Mainly what, okay, so... You guys probably, I mean, if you're if you're following me, you probably know um, that that there's a guy named Jack Dorsey who is the founder of Twitter and Square. I obviously spent a lot of time on Twitter, so I'm guessing a lot of my uh, followers might actually be aware of that. But this is a guy uh, who has, uh, in my view really changed the world for the better. I have had the good fortune of meeting Jack once um, and just really a, a brilliant, brilliant man. And I, I have a lot of respect for him. But I want you to take a look at, and by the way, one other thing to note, um, I don't like making things political, so I don't want to even talk about what happened, but 
maybe I will say this, like, forget what you think about, um, you know, the former president, right, for a second, I know people are heated about it and whatnot. So forget about that for a second. But my whole life, I've always kind of um, thought as the president of the United States, whoever that was, whoever the, you know, what was, was always the kind of the most powerful man um, in the world or powerful person in the world. He was essentially taken off of for his actions, whether you again agree or disagree, I don't even want to get into that. My point is he and his, you know, whatever, were essentially, you know, taken off uh, of Twitter, which was his main kind of, I guess you could say his main mic to the world. And, uh, and Jack actually, you know, he's been a big, big Bitcoin advocate for a very, very long time. And I'm going to go deeper into some of kind of what Jack's been saying about Bitcoin and Blue Sky and, and, and some of the suggestions that he has in terms of building a better future where we don't have to be putting ourselves in a position where you need to, you know, silence, let's say, the president of the United States or whatever, um, where we have more open, decentralized platforms. And then, ladies and gentlemen, today, whoa, 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 Elon freaking Musk. Okay, no, I know there are some hardcore Elon haters out there, okay, um, um, and you know I I'm kind of woke to some of that too now. I'm starting to learn about why maybe you might not want to trust this guy. But let's put that aside for a second. He is the wealthiest man on earth. I do do drive a Tesla, and I love you know I have loved kind of generally like the the whole you know at least the thinking around electric cars and you know making cars autonomous, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So. And the fact that, again, again, put aside what you feel about him for a second, but the wealthiest man on earth has just said Bitcoin in his profile, just like Jack Dorsey. Hello, hello, hello. So I think those are incredibly, incredibly exciting developments, right? So like two of, if you ask me, the most interesting, prolific, impactful, um, wealthiest, you know, uh, people on earth are now literally their 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 handle is just one word which is bitcoin beautiful right beautiful so if you've been following you know me or whatever uh, for a long time then then you probably know since 2011 i've been telling everybody and their dog about bitcoin and about the future of bitcoin and so one thing i wanted to mention is is that if you are interested in going down the bitcoin rabbit hole um, you can go to buildingonbitcoin.com. That will literally take you to YouTube, um, which is the, the page where I essentially have been archiving all of my interviews. And, and again, I know a lot of you out there, you're probably not technical or maybe even an entrepreneur. Like you're just looking to maybe get a job or do something different. And look, I, I've interviewed um, authors and you know, YouTubers and entrepreneurs and engineers and like you name it, like people who run ATM machines. I mean, there's literally like, and I'll keep going with this. And so enjoy that. And, uh, and, you know, and give me your feedback and hit that like and all that good stuff. Okay, so what else? What else? There are, so as I mentioned, I wanted to uh, go down a bit of uh, a deeper, you know, kind of a rabbit hole, um, really around kind of Jack Dorsey's comments from last week. And again, you know, I, I've been, I was meaning to make some comment, I was meaning to make some videos last week about this, but I never really uh, got around to it. So I wanted to make sure that I touch on it today. So, okay, another another crazy, crazy thing. Here we go, let's go share a screen one more time. Um, it should come through in a second. And okay, so one of my, so one of my favorite books from last year was uh, a book called Principles by a guy named Ray Dalio. And he's, you know, oh, by the way, this is Jack Dorsey's uh, Twitter feed, just, uh, just so you're aware. Um, but anyway, so, so there's a guy named Ray Dalio, who is like literally the most successful hedge fund manager, the, 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 the founder of Bridgewater, um, just wrote a piece on Bitcoin and you should read it if you have time. Uh, maybe I'll do another video on it and take you kind of, you know, through it. But uh, but really, okay, so a couple of different topics. There's a bunch of things I wanted to talk to people about, but let's start um, here. So last week, something massive happened. Like I said, the, the government, or sorry, the, um, or Jack Dorsey rather, just, and the company at large, um, you know, deplatformed the president of the United States. And this is what he said. So he says, I do not celebrate or feel pride in our having to ban real Donald Trump from Twitter or how we got here. After a clear warning, we'd take this action. We made a decision with the best information we had based on threats to physical safety, both on Twitter. Da, da, da. Was this correct? Okay, so so again, some of you may have read this, but I just, 
just felt super compelled to to do some you know commentary around this. So I believe this was the, this is important, right? I mean, this man or this company silenced this president of the United States. So he, you know, so if you can silence the king, then I, mean, I think Naval said that. Then you are the king, right? Um, and and Jack is the king in many ways. He, he gets Bitcoin. He's into meditation. Like I said, I, I feel positive vibes. I know there's a lot of people who have negative thoughts about Jack as well. Um, you know, and so, you know, whatever. Okay. I believe this was the right decision for Twitter. We face an ex extraordinary and untenable circumstance, forcing us to focus all of our actions on public safety, offline harm as a result of online speech is demonstrably real and what drives our policy and enforcement above all. Okay. So I'm just going to fast forward a bit. That said, having to ban an account has real and significant ramifications. While there are clear and obvious expectations, I feel a ban is a failure of ours ultimately to promote healthy conversation and a time for us to reflect on our operations and in the environment around us. Having to take these actions fragment the public conversation. They divide us. They limit the potential for clarification, redemption, and learning, and set the president I feel is dangerous. The power of an individual or corporation has over a part of the global public conversation. So look, people like Narendra Modi, there's a lot of people around the world, prime ministers, presidents that use Twitter as their main vocal, you know, kind of point. And this is the man from that company saying, look, you know, he had to take certain actions to uh, silence the president of his own country. <laughs> so if you're now in India or some other place, obviously, um, it, it's obviously possible as well. And this is why he's so smart. He's so forward thinking that he's saying that, look, the reason and I'm not going to read everything, you can check it out and, you know, and, and read kind of whatever. But uh, the reason I have so much passion for Bitcoin is largely, ay, 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 sorry about that. Um, the reason I have so much passion for Bitcoin is largely because of the model it demonstrates. Okay, let's pause here. A foundational internet technology that is not controlled or influenced by any single individual or entity. This is what the internet wants to be and over time more of it will be. Wow, okay, I love that. Okay, you might want to read that one again, but that is huge, ladies and gentlemen. Like, just think, just let that settle in. Don't let this pass you by. Only six thousand retweets, twenty thousand likes. There's a lot of people out there who haven't seen this. This is this is this is this is important, right? I do not celebrate or feel pride in our having to ban Donald Trump from Twitter or how we got here. After a clear warning, we take this action. We made da 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 da, and then he goes on to say that. First step for Blue Sky was a review of existing work. Boom, click on that. I've checked that out. It's on IPFS, right? Pretty cool. So Blue Sky is essentially the project that uh, that these people that 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 you know Twitter is trying to spearhead to essentially um, you know do like an open, public, decentralized Twitter. And you know the one <clears throat> thing that I will mention, uh, you know, in terms of uh, the blue sky project so if you click on it here if i go to it by the way you can tell they're very serious because they have <laughs> i'm kidding uh i'm sure they are uh so anyway so twitter is funding a small independent team of up to five open source architects engineers and designers to develop an open and decentralized platform for social media the goal is for twitter to ultimately be a client of the standard one of the goals when we announced Blue Sky was to develop a grounded understanding of relevant work that may ta many talented people in the decentralized community have been doing. So if you go go on here and, and you click on this link here, you'll actually see they, they talk about, <clears throat> see, it's the ecosystem review. And again, I won't bore people with it right now, but for all you, you know, new dear <laughs> entrepreneurial geeks out there, you might want to check this out. I'm really interested by this. And the one that re the one platform that really captures my imagination thus far is Mastodon. So if you don't have a lot of time, you don't want to at least look at that. And a couple of guys out of, I think Toronto, maybe even like, I think uh, the guys behind Cold Card, they're actually, they've launched a Bitcoin instance of Mastodon. And it's like a decent, it's like a Twitter, but like a Bitcoin version of Twitter. It's more decentralized. It's got nothing to do with Bitcoin. It's not on the Bitcoin platform, but it's the, the, the federation and the kind of the way that the system is architected. It's a very, very interesting and you know i think people should check it out so it's very very cool um okay so now let's move on to some other topics that have been top of mind um 
Okay, so something, I, I hope I don't butcher this. I've been sitting in on a lot of, oh, by the way, if you haven't tried um, uh, Clubhouse yet, it's an app for iPhone users only right now, but it'll probably come to other platforms. If you haven't tried it, you need to get on there. Um, you know, as many of you know, we used to do big Bitcoin meetups here in Toronto, like a thousand people. We have maybe 10,000 email addresses of people that were um, kind of like coming to our events every three months that we would do. So I've been really thinking hard about like, well, how do we reach these people? How do we do the same type of deal? But like kind of in this pandemic era, I think we have our answer, ladies and gentlemen. It is called, um, it's called Clubhouse. It's an app. You should get it. Like try and figure out how to get it. It's like referral only. You can maybe DM me. I can try and see if I can, you know, um, hook you up. But but it's it's kind of hard. Like you only have a limited number of referrals, but just ask people around you, whatever, you'll get it and and get this app. And what we're thinking of doing is actually doing like weekly, maybe eventually, you know, a couple times a week where we just get together with like minded people and uh, and start hosting our own meetups on on Bitcoin and just talk about, you know, different topics that interest us. And I know there's a lot of that already going on in Twitter, but I, I think there's space for hundreds and thousands more like like that so so look forward to that um but but one of the things that has been super top of mind is this whole wall street bets thing i'm sure many of you have heard about it it's a bit of like a oh it's like it's kind of caught the the imagination of the of the world right now um and i wanted to talk about this as well so you know if you if you have not <clears throat> heard about wall street bets it's again i'm probably going to butcher it a little bit here but it's essentially like a reddit um, a Reddit forum that somehow managed to, um, okay, I'm going to totally butcher this, but okay. So I think this is what happened. Okay. I'm going to, I'm going to try my best, but, um, there's essentially a, a hedge fund out there that was shorting game stops, which is or game game shop game stops. Which one is it? I'm already butchering it, but it's like that famous store where you buy your video games. Right. Um, so what happened is, is that uh, there was a hedge fund that was shorting it and a bunch of like Reddit users got together on a, uh, like on a channel or whatever they call it, a community group here and essentially kind of saw through this and figured out how to, <clears throat> um, stick it to the, the hedge fund. So they they essentially, I don't want to even go into it, but they did a bunch of things uh, on Robinhood, which is a retail platform where people can buy and sell stocks. They went and essentially um, did a bunch of things that screwed the hedge fund. So let's put it that way. Again, I could maybe do a deeper dive if people are more interested. And they and the hedge fund people were like super pissed. They're claiming that this is, you know, not allowed. And it turns out that there's some connection between them and Robin Hood. And I don't know, it's this big fiasco. I'll be honest, I'm not even the best guy to talk about it. But but why am I talking about it? So I think if I'm not mistaken, Robin Hood is like shut off like trading to um, this like GameStop uh, stock. And they've also gone further. And I think they've st shut down trading for crypto or something for a bit. And it has gone bananas. Um, and people are, are, are kind of waking up to the fact that it's not just like hedge funds and like maybe governments and whatnot um, that are working against them. It's like the whole freaking system to some extent is is rigged uh against you know the little guy and um and and i think more and more people are waking up to that fact and more and more, more and more people are realizing that you know um that they need to do something and 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 the most peaceful something that that you can do or that i i believe that i can do is uh well two things is one is go up there and you know um obviously keep enough money for your emergency funds and your bank and blah 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 but 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 start you know dollar cost averaging into bitcoin and and having a bit of exposure to bitcoin now um i don't think it's like a a high risk proposition anymore. In fact, I think it's becoming high risk to not, um, you know, have a bit of uh, exposure to Bitcoin. So, so, and this is what Elon Musk and Jack Dorsey and everybody is kind of coming out and saying uh, more and more. And so I think now because of the Wall Street bets thing as well, a lot of younger people who maybe didn't even care or didn't even worry about this stuff is now kind of like, wait, hold on, what's going on? Like maybe there's, maybe there's something, you know, um, Maybe there's something to this, right? And and I think more and more and more and more and more people are 
realizing that Bitcoin truly is the future of a money. Okay, so let's keep moving forward. A um, couple of other things I wanted to just really uh, bring out there is that I wanted to just share, um, and this is a bit weird, but hey, whatever. This is my freaking channel, so I can do whatever the F I want. Um, and, <laughs> you know, really, I started this channel because, like, I got tired of, like, boring my wife with, like, always talking about Bitcoin. So I'm just like, you know what? I'll just talk to a camera, make it available on the internet. If people want to hear it, they hear it. If they don't, they don't. Big freaking hairy deal. Uh, okay. So I wanted to just, you know, I don't know. Look, I tweet a lot. I tweet like a bean. You should go follow me on Twitter if you don't, because uh, that is literally my like kind of stream of consciousness, like my, my, my brain farts, if you will. Okay. So first of all, I wanted to share this. So check this out. 2016. Oh, by the way, I did it, it, I did a search uh, just this morning. This is super weird, but it, this might help, might be helpful. Like, like I said, I can just whatever. Um, if you go, if you if you do a search, there's this thing called advanced search, and you can actually. This is like literally now me, like almost building myself up to like tooting my horn. But you know what? If I don't um, do this, then who the f will okay so to these accounts so from these accounts so if i actually put here for example if i want to show you if i want to find like certain tweets let's say you know um from these accounts sunny ray i can say it has the word bitcoin in it i was trying to figure out like when did i actually start like publicly tweeting about bitcoin um if you're you want to let's say find out i started going okay well maybe i can actually you know i don't know somehow prove it what if i just went you know, back into the the Wayback Machine here, or sorry, the, the Twitter search engine and just tried to find it, you know, like, uh, I wonder if I can, if I can do it. So I, I went like this, I went hit search and, uh, you know, absolutely uh, nothing came up. Hmm. Okay. Well, that didn't work. You win some, you lose some. Okay. Let's, let's just go back. Sorry about that people. Um, okay. Let's go back here. So I, I've been, like I said, tweeting like a bean. So here to, so 2012, by the way, was the first tweet I was able to find. Maybe I'll do that some other day, but 2012, I started tweeting about Bitcoin. So almost nine years, I had 10 years. I kind of been knowing about this, learning about it, obsessing about Bitcoin. So now my goal, my net, so, and by the way, I've been building companies in this space. I've been singing songs. I've been making videos. I've been doing events. I, ah, you can, you name it. I've been doing it. Um, and I'm kind of just like, now my new thing is I'm a full-time Bitcoin or since 2011. I don't know what else, what that means, but that, 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 that's what I do. Okay. Eric Schmidt. So former CEO of Google said this, and I tweeted this back in 2016. I think he said it in 2014 or something. Bitcoin is a remarkable cryptographic achievement has an enormous value. Like, you know, so it's not just Elon. It's not just Twitter. Um, hello, like the freaking guy from CEO, ex CEO, whatever of Google is now, is not now, but years ago saying this, you're just waking up to it now because you've been asleep at the wheel. Um, let's keep moo uh, being here. So, excuse me. So a couple of things I wanted to share here. Um, so I've been saying mostly like good news or whatever, whatever. So I wanted to share something that's not so maybe exciting. So if you see here breaking, um, Supreme Court of India has struck off Reserve Bank of India's banking ban against crypto. The court held that RBI circular dated 6th April 2018 is unconstitutional. So by the way, if you don't know I mean, th th this was huge. Th and uh, the company that I founded, UnoCoin, was actually a central part of this. In fact, it was my co-founder, Harish, and Satvik that were real. And I have interviews with Satvik, um, you know, and, and we'll, have, uh, we'll be making more content around kind of the happenings of what happened back in the day. And uh, But, you know, this was a really, really tumultuous and, and volatile and scary time in our lives when the RBI tried to shut down our banking. We took them to the Supreme Court and over a two year period ended up finally winning. Um, however, just in, look at this, an hour ago, and Crypto Kanun, if you're not following these guys, you need to. Um, they're super on top of it. In fact, they were in the courtroom with our guys um, when we fought the battle 
and, and literally witnessed it and, and tweeted in real time. So if you go through Crypto Canon's <laughs> Twitter feed, you might even find the actual like proceedings and like the, the what was said in real time during that whole court um, case. There's also a 200 page PDF you want to check out. Anyways, Justin, government planning to introduce the bill in the next session of the Lok Sabha to ban all private cryptocurrencies and launch its own CBDC. <sighs> bearish okay so now we've got let's see here the smartest so I, I actually replied to this with these pictures of jack and elon and you know with uh you know copying narendra modi because you know and 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 just suggesting that look like you know you you like twitter obviously so the guy okay so i mean you know here you like hopefully wealth and rich people he's the richest guy on earth look bitcoin like you're gonna really try and ban this thing seriously seriously and then all the tens of millions and of youth and kids and everyone you're gonna you're gonna put them on the wrong side of the law um i don't think this is positive for india i'm not gonna say anything further than that because you know um yeah but anyways i think this is a very very dark thing and 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 here's the reason i'm coming online and on the air every freaking day and talking to people is because what ha the government represents the people so so the government should represent the people so if the people want bitcoin then they should ask for it and you know and look if nothing else i think uno coin situation was kind of a a bit of a example that look you can win if you fight and so anyways you know whoops anyways oops i uh, just wanted to share those thoughts with people and you know so we talked a little bit about you know elon Musk. we talked about you know jack dorsey we talked about um you know blue sky and how i think you know there'll be this like kind of this renaissance towards decentralization and then we talked about elon musk and how he's tweeting about it and a little bit about india as well you know and i want to finish up on this note um that balaji i don't know if you guys know who balaji is but he he tweeted this out and i thought i thought it was pretty interesting you know Balaji's a little out there you know a lot of people um <clears throat> Obviously, you remember 20, no, people don't forget, right? So 21, obviously, .co or .com or whatever it was, was like his first attempt. And a lot of people talk about how it wasn't really successful. I actually, we bought one. Um, we had one in our, our office in India. Um, so, you know, but the thing is, is you try things, some things, some things work, some things don't, you just learn from it. I still think Balaji is one of the, one of the smarter guys in the room. And I wanted to just, again, share <clears throat> a little bit about what this guy's been saying. So he said, look, FinTech front end, crypto back end, social community, right? Right now, the front end, back end, and community pieces are split across separate apps. The real crypto Twitter. Okay, so, so if you see here, he's saying that social is here, TikTok, you got Reddit, you know, you got, then you got finance, which is, you know, Bitcoin and Cash App, Coinbase, you know, um, you've got Robinhood. But what he's saying is, is that there's a renaissance coming and it's not going to be this, right? Maybe, and maybe, maybe it will be, maybe one or two of these guys will, but it could be a totally new game. And that game could be you. Right. And so this is kind of the theme behind everything I've been doing. You know, I know a lot of people are a bit confused. They're like, why are you doing all these YouTube videos? It doesn't make any sense. Um, really, my, my goal is for people to recognize that it's not about just NGU. It's not just about like, oh, that you can get, you can buy some Bitcoin and the number goes up and you become, you know, you can become financially free and, you know, help others. That That's awesome, uh, obviously. Um, but you can also you ready for this? You can also build on Bitcoin. So if you go to buildingonbitcoin.com, uh, that will take you again to the YouTube channel where I've interviewed 70 people, like the top notch people. Think about it. I've spent 10 years in this space, built companies, done anything. I've worked for Google venture back companies back Buttercoin in 20, whatever, 2012 was it? 2013, they hired me. So from 2013 all the way till now, like really, really full time. And then another two years prior to that, of just being obsessed and building communities take advantage of this because this wasn't available for a lot of people. And, you know, it's really up to you, like whether you choose to learn about this or not. And it, there, there is literally nothing more important that I can, you know, um, suggest that, 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 that you pay attention to. And I think, 
Um, and you know, and there's just like uh, one point and one dimension is is that lately I've been getting kind of this like feeling that again that 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 people are trying to wake up and and we're about to see a lot of change in the world um and you're seeing that already with you know whether it be the emergence of like i said robotics um or whether it be you know bitcoin really kind of leading this singularity the technological singularity that 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 has been predicted for so long um and and these will be interesting times there'll be times that can either i think make you or break you and so you know and i and i also believe that like being <clears throat> a business owner or building on Bitcoin isn't just about like, oh, here are these tactics and here are these uh, these tools and tips. It's actually deeper than that. It's about mindset. You know, it's about um, it's about like how do you manage anxiety, right? A lot of us right now go through a lot of anxiety. We feel alone. We feel scared. We feel um, you know like the thing I shared about the India thing. Obviously, that that's scary, right? And so, how do you manage those things? But in the face of it, continue to create, continue to build, continue to serve, um, and and you know keep scaling and keep helping people, right? And and so that's really kind of been the main message. You're gonna start seeing me come on, you know, the air like this more and talking more directly to the camera about just things I'm thinking about, things I'm, you know, I care about. I've also got this, this book called Bitcoin for Dummies. I've got like 20 books uh, on Bitcoin on my shelf, but I figured I was going to start here and start breaking it down for people and just, you know, kind of just sift through it, read some things for people. I know, see, this is the thing. Sometimes I love reading and sometimes I hate reading. And so I'm going to assume that there's a lot of people out there that don't like reading, at least from my experience, I've noticed that people don't like reading, but it's sometimes easy to turn on a YouTube video with some nice colors in the back and you got some guy just reading stuff to you. So, you know, whether you're working or whatever, you're busy with the kids, you're running groceries, you're work, you know, whatever it is you're doing, you can just kind of just tap in and, and, and the goal is to just provide you with an endless stream of consciousness and of value and education and entertainment. And that is it folks. Today, I've got some big interviews coming up. I think I'm going to be going online with Connie Gallippi for round two. Super pumped about that. I have a conversation with uh, Robert Breedlove. I, I'm going to ask him to come on the show. I mean, uh, he's really captured kind of the zeitgeist and, and is kind of like uh, a lot of people are talking about him. Super excited about him. I've got I, I don't want to mention him because, you know, under promise over deliver type of deal, but I have got some amazing guests lined up for you and those of you wondering like why don't tens of thousands of people watch your videos just consider it a treat consider it the best kept secret okay for now um that tens of thousands of people aren't watching these videos and just know also that i could like i said uno coin our uno coin has more uh, last time i checked had more subscribers on youtube than coindesk Say what? Yeah, exactly. So if I just fed all my videos there, and I like have fifty thousand things. If we just kind of started, you know, we could force it. We're not going to force it. We're not going to force it. We're going to let it happen organically. We're going to let people hear about it. We're going to let people find out about it. And then slowly, slowly, you know, as time, you know, progresses, we'll, we'll introduce it more into uh, the content, into our different avenues. Okay, that is all I got. We will talk later. My friend's calling, probably to buy a Bitcoin. Later. <laughs>